Hi everybody. Um, okay, so we're we started chapter 23, uh, which a lot of it has to do with this thing called the Claisen condensation, which creates beta ketoesters, right? So a ketone, beta to an ester. Not, a, not in the next door carbon, but two carbons away, beta. And it's kind of related vaguely to the aldol reaction, which was, of course, taking a ketone or aldehyde and reacting it with either the same ketone or aldehyde or another one or within the, within the same molecule. Uh, but the idea is you, you, you make an enolate and then it reacts with another ketone or aldehyde and you eventually make this beta, alpha beta unsaturated ketone or aldehyde. And there's like a dehydration is the last step, right? So, yeah, I'm not going to review this, but this is all old stuff. Make an enolate, attack, protonate your intermediate, you get a beta hydroxy ketone, and then lots of water. Okay? So the Claisen does the same thing, but it makes a beta ketoester. The difference is the Claisen operates on esters rather than uh, ketones. So, this shows it in a, in a nutshell. An ester reacts basically with itself. And you get a beta, beta ketoester. It makes an ester enolate. It makes an ester enolate, and then and then that reacts with another ester. And this is an NaS reaction, right? Electrons go up, electrons go down. This is the definition of NaS, right? Nucleophilic acyl substitution. You get your product, but then something kind of weird happens because you have a acidic proton. It doesn't just stop at the product, because it, you know, it is the product. Uh, the base takes off that proton, because that's what bases do. And then you make an enolate. This is actually your final product, although, although we have a second step, which is the acid step. And the acid will reprotonate the enolate. So that's how you wind up with your final, final, final beta ketoester product. OK. Um, as we said, um, the product is very acidic, or moderately acidic. Product is acidic. And when we say acidic, we mean the, you know, the beta ketoester thing that you make. And it's, it's more acidic than like a normal ester. Um, okay, so let's just think about that a bit. If I have a beta ketoester, the proton, how you know how acidic is it? pKa is 11 or so, which is pretty acidic um, compared to a normal ester, which is about 25, and I'll, I'll show that in a second. So yeah, 11 versus 25, yeah, like that is about about 25. But keto somehow it makes it more acidic. Why would that be? Why why do things become more acidic? Of course, the reason always comes to the conjugate base. So if you make the conjugate base, you can resonate it around there. You can resonate it to the other carbonyl. And that little bit of extra resonance, whoops, oh there it is, okay, oxygen. That little bit of extra resonance makes a huge deal in terms of the acidity. And, you know, 11 versus 25, that means it's like 10 to the 16 times more acidic. <laughs> Just by having like an, one extra resonance structure. 10 to the 16 times more acidic, which is, a one followed by sixteen zeros. Okay, so big difference. Uh, so let's just compare some other things, acidity of other stuff. Other functional groups, kind of like this. Um, oh, well, ketone is much less acidic. It's about twenty-ish. PK and then an ester, as we said, is 
is about 25. So ester is a little bit less acidic than a ketone. Um, what about like a uh, diketone? Well, this has the same kind of property as a, as a beta keto ester, but it's just two ketones. So it is definitely more acidic, and it's like nine. So yeah, it's all, all, anytime you have two carbon yields next door to each other. What about a nitrile? Nitriles kind of acts like um, a nitrile kind of acts like a uh, carbonyl. This is five. This is actually even more acidic. Uh, a few nitriles. There's always this kind of enhanced effect with the two things near, near, next door to each other. Thirteen. Um, what about a beta diester? Like two esters next door to each other? Yeah, that's also acidic. So that's like 13 or so. So all of these are kind of like more acidic, much more acidic than like a, than like a ketone or a, an ester just by itself. Okay. Okay, so on the clason. Um, I mentioned this before, but let's just say it again. The acidity of the beta keto ester uh, is kind of used to drive the equilibrium. It drives the equilibrium of the clason. The idea again is if you if say we have just molecule A. And it equilibrates to molecule B, which equilibrates to molecule C, and that equilibrates to molecule D. Um, eventually, we reach F. We'll say, okay. So you got this equilibrium, equilibrium, equilibrium. Well, that's all problematic because um, because everything's in equilibrium. How's it going to make it all the way to F? Which eventually we'll get to F. But what happens is you eventually have like an irreversible step, and that's what actually drives everything is reversible, 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 irreversible, right? That gets you to E, and in our case, that then we, we have another irreversible step, and that those two things are kind of like drive the equilibrium, and that's what we say the acidity of the beta keto ester drives the equilibrium. Let's just show that with one more example, real quick. With a clason. So let's have an ethyl ester. Let's have it with benzene this time, CH2 benzene. And we're going to basically use this molecule twice. Okay. And, and we're going to react, react with a base. Any OET is a, a kind of standard base we use in this chapter sodium ethoxide, which happens to match the fact that we have ethyl esters. That's often a choice we make. Uh, ethanol is our solvent, and then H3O plus is the workup, okay? All right, so the final product, we can kind of visualize it. It's going to be this with that attached and a beta keto ester. So it's going to be like this, and then we're going to have a ketone next to a CH2 phenyl, right? So this carbon is going to be connected essentially to that carbon, right? Through that ketone. Okay. So we just redraw the starting material. And then we just kind of redraw, okay, ketone, phenyl. That's the product. That's how you can kind of visualize the, what the product looks like. And it's going to be the same thing of like equilibrium, 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 irreversible, irreversible. Okay. So the equilibrium is base takes the alpha proton. Makes an enolate. Base takes proton, make an enolate. Ester enolate, as we call it. 
has to re-enolate attacks the other ester. Well, it's the same ester. In a second, it'll be a different ester, but for now, it's you know it's basically a molecule reacting with itself. And and this, so this is a clasin, and we we might even call it a self clasin, self clasin, right? Just like we had a self aldol and a mixed aldol and an intramolecular aldol. We're going to have a self clasin, a mixed clasin, and an intramolecular clasin. Okay. All right. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, any other arrows? This swings down. That attacks. Of course. Now you got the electrons go up. Ketone. Keep the same orientation. ET, you got your O ethoxy group, and then you got a CH2 phenyl. Right, blue shirt. Tetrahedral intermediate. Every NAS has a tetrahedral intermediate. Then this swings down, kicks off the ethoxy. Give yourself some room. Ketone, CH2 phenyl. Now, like always, you got a highly acidic proton. So the this is where it's a reversible, irreversible reaction. The base takes the proton. We can enolize one direction or the other, or let's go towards the ketone. It could go to the ester also. So the base, the B dot dot. Takes that proton and enolizes. Okay, I'm not going to draw the enolate, uh, just because I, I did this last time. You know, I, I drew it and then we did the, the, the last step, which is the acid. And just due to lack of space, I'm just going to skip that part. But it's really not that exciting. It's just like, oh, make an enolate again. And then we reprotonate the enolate and we get the final product. So you can look at the previous example if you want to see how that's done. With these, I'm going to put a little stars to suggest those are irreversible. Why is it irreversible? Because you got a highly acidic proton. Bases take highly acidic protons irreversibly, okay? Or mostly irreversibly. Yeah, and that's just another example of a uh, self clasin. Alright. Another point I'll make is in order for this all to happen, you know, reversible, 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 then you have this irreversible step. What's a requirement of that irreversible step? It's that proton, right? You have a, an extra alpha proton that we can take off, and that allows us to irreversibly make the enolate, right? Enolate in there. Enolate. Um, and then and then we finish it off with that acid treatment. But what if you don't have a proton there? Then we were kind of in because if you with the right kind of molecule, there won't be a proton there, and then it's kind of stuck. And this is not a favorable equilibrium. Then, so let's just show an example of how that might look. Okay, so just we'll show a, a bad a bad clasin as an example. Bad clasin. Show the good clasin and show bad clasin. So bad clays and would look like this. We got a nice ester, and maybe we got a pair of ethyl groups. Okay, we got it. We have a CH there. Um, so it'll actually, you know, you can envision it making because there's a CH there. You can see it. You can envision it seeing it make a product, and it would be a ketone, and you'd have a Right? That would be the, the clasin product. This is also beta ketoester, like they're all beta ketoester, right? 
just like the top is a beta keto ester. They're all beta keto esters and clasins. Okay. Um, however, this the, the problem here, and you, you know, you'd use your NaOAT, same thing. The the problem here is. Um, once it forms, you know, you have your equilibria, you have a couple of steps of equilibria, um, and then you, you form this, and I'll, I'll draw it again, okay, we have two ethyl groups there, yeah? We don't have a, a alpha CH, so we can't do that thing where we, we drive the equilibrium. So I can't do the base step that we always are doing, right? There's no, no nothing to deprotonate. There's no more alpha CHs. So this does not work. No acidic CHs. Okay, so the net consequence here is this, this actually is a bad reaction. It's a bad reaction. It actually does not favor product. It favors starting material. Bad reaction favors starting material. Okay, and the reason is because you actually need two alpha CHs: one alpha CH to do the reaction, and then a second alpha CH to drive the equilibrium, like we did in this example. This was a great example because you have two alpha CHs. There's actually two of them. There's one and another, right? When you only have one, you got a problem. Okay. So this is bad for kind of two reasons. This whole reaction on the bottom is bad for two reasons. Two reasons. The first reason is actually it's overall very sterically uh, hindered. That's one reason. And the other is you need two alpha CHs. Right, uh, and we only have one alpha CH. You need to one to do the reaction and one to finish up the equilibrium. Okay, so we did we did number one, which is kind of like the self clasin. Now now we're number two is the mixed clasin, and this is kind of like the mixed aldol that you may have remem may remember. The idea is we're using two different esters, and um, we went through all sorts of discussion about this with the aldol. We're going to keep this one pretty simple. Um, we're just going to say that this works the best if one of the if one of the esters. Is only can only be electrophilic, only electrophilic, electrophilic. Okay, and that means no alpha CHs at all. Okay, because if it has no alpha CHs, it can't be a nucleophile, because the way you form an enolate, a nucleophile, is by taking off an alpha CH. So this works best if one of the sides on, is only electrophilic and there's no alpha CHs. So let's just show a good example. We're going to skip the bad examples. Uh, okay, so good example. Here's a good example. Es ethyl ester. Okay, so it's ethyl propionate. And th this, is a, this is a good nucleophile. It can also be an electrophile because it can be attacked. All esters can be attacked. But it's a good nucleophile because it has two alpha CHs. You need at least two alpha CHs, right? Okay, and so we're going to react this with a uh, electrophilic partner that can only be an electrophile. Only can only be an electrophile, and the reason is because it has no alpha CHs. That's a benzene. You got alpha benzene, but you don't have any alpha CHs, right? So this is going to be the nucleophile. This is just going to kick off the ethoxy. And what's the final product? What's the what is the reagents we use? Base followed by acid. 
technically we have a solvent. It's not an always drawn out, but the solvent would probably be ethanol. So it's sodium ethoxide and ethanol. Okay, so yeah, this is just going to, uh, alpha position is going to attack, kick off the ethoxy. What kind of keto ester are we going to make? Alpha keto ester, beta keto ester, gamma keto ester, delta keto ester. It's always a beta keto ester. It's always going to look like the nucleophile, right? It's going to look like the nucleophilic side, and then the other part's just going to be kind of hanging off. Okay? And there's our product. Of course, we could do the mechanism if we want. I'm not going to. I'll start it. Base takes the proton, makes an enolate, and then you have the enolate go attack, electrons go up. Next step, electrons go down, kick off the ethyl. Then we take off the remaining alpha proton, the second alpha proton, and then acid protonates it. Okay. So you can do that if you like, or if you understand it, there's not really a reason to copy it again. It's all the same. Um, okay. I think they, they they have a homework problem. I don't know the the problem number. It's me. I don't know the problem number. But the homework problem was something like a bad cloison. Oops, bad. I can't spell today at all. Bad mixed cloison. Because these are mixed cloisons. Um to draw all of the products, assuming you have a mixture of things that can be nucleophilic or electrophilic, and we'll call this A and this B, then this B base followed by acid, and then drawing all the different mixed products. So you'd have AA, AB, BA, and BB. That's kind of a fun exercise if you want to do it. We did the same thing without the aldol reaction. A, 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 B, B, A, B, B. Okay. So, yeah, if you can do that if you like. All right, just like with aldols, first we do self aldol and self clazin. Then we do mixed aldol and mixed cloison. What's the third one? Intramolecular cloison. And so it's going to be a cloison within the same molecule. It's not that exciting. Uh, to make it exciting, we give it a name. It's the Diekmann. Diekmann cyclization does not mean anything fancy. except it means an intramolecular clasin. So it's a clasin within the same molecule. Let's, and it usually makes, it used to make, what kind of rings do we like? What size rings are good? Uh, five and six usually, member rings. Okay. So, let's show an example. We got a long beta diester. All right. Um, I really like to number my carbons. It's even better to make my zigzags a little cleaner, but I'm, I'm going to be lazy and not do that. You can make it nicer in your notes. I'm not numbering the ethoxies because that's not that critical. Okay. But I do show one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's seven carbons. And does this make a seven member ring? The answer is no, it does not make a seven member ring because it's not it's not like carbon one is attacking carbon seven. It's gonna be like two is attacking seven or six is attacking one. But there in both cases it's the same. But the ring size then if is one, two, three, four, five, six, so this makes a six member ring. Okay. Um so I'm gonna draw just the NAOET. 
yes, we have ethanol, but sometimes we skip the ethanol and then acid. It's the same thing as always. And the last steps are going to be um, the deprotonation, reprotonation thing that we talked about. So what's, the, what's it going to look like? It's just going to be a, a beta ketoester where 2 attacks 7. Um, maybe we'll just step down through the mechanism. We could do 2 attacks 7, or we could do 6 attacks 1. I think it's just easier to just go left to right. So the base takes the proton off number 2. I'm not going to even, I'm not going to draw the arrows. We understand it. There's an H. We grab the H. We make an enolite. Just with the numbering, it's going to get a little complicated. So, you can try to squeeze it into your notes if you want. There's our enolite. Zigzag. Let's see if we screwed up our, by checking our numbering. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, very nice. To do the cyclization it's just the ester attacks the other ester. The ester enolate attacks and you know and carbon two attacks seven. So now electrons swing down, this goes up there, this goes up there. These are technically in equilibrium, so let's make them equilibria arrows. Okay, now it's going to be um, something that looks like this. We have oxygen, ethyl, there's our ethyl ester, carbon 1. Here's carbon 2. Alright, we have carbon 1 and 2. Now, now it's going to swing around. Maybe we'll just decide to go this way. Three, four, five, six, and seven. And what's on what's on carbon seven? Right now it's an O minus and an O ethyl. Right? Swings and down kicks off. There you go, there's your beta keto ester. It's a cyclic beta keto ester. And this is where we irreversibly react with base and then irreversibly act, react with acid again, like always. And then the product's going to be the same exact molecule that looks like a cyclic beta keto ester. good to add the numbering. Always keep track of that numbering. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And same up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Cyclic beta keto ester. Cyclic beta keto ester. All right, cyclic beta keto esters. That's what the Diekman cyclization makes. All right. Uh, there's a homework problem. I don't know the number, but you'll, you'll see it in the book if you're doing the homework, um, that basically it's what it's, saying, it's showing is a possible reaction, a, a possible Diekmann cyclization. Looks the same as the one we just did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not too exciting, right? Um, let's number it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And remember, with the this is basically the one we just did. But and remember, there's no difference between carbon two attacking seven or carbon six attacking one, because that's 
the same product, right? But what if we add a methyl on six? Ooh, now it's a little weird because why is it a little weird? Well, let's just draw what the products are, or the potential products, if I go one way or the other. So if I if I do two attack seven, that gives one product. And if six attacks one, it would give a different product. And so if two attacks seven, it's actually the same product as I drew in the up up top basically with a slight difference. Okay, so we have was it one, two, three, four, five, six, and then they got the ketone on seven, right? And what else? What's on what's on six? Oh methyl's on six. Okay, so we have a methyl on six. Alright. So I'll explain the you know, one of these is totally favored, the other is disfavored. Um, but if six attacks one, um, I'm going to actually keep it the same, same orientation. And then let's see. Okay, so, but I'm gonna I'm gonna call this seven now. Okay, if this is seven. This is six. This is five, four, three, two, one. And then we have a. Where's a, a, if seven attacks one, then the ketones on one, right? All right. And where's that methyl group? It's on six. Okay. All right. So this would be the outcome, right? We'd have one pathway or the other pathway. And remember what we were just saying about how if you, to do a successful Claisen, you need, what do you need? Remember the things we need? <laughs> we need two alpha protons, right? So there's two alpha protons on two, there's not two alpha protons on six. The reason that that's important is because the, the extra proton drives the equilibrium. Remember, remember that? Okay, so which is the good one? Two, two attack seven or six attack one? And the answer is the top one, because in the end, two had two alpha protons. Six had only one alpha proton, so it could do the cyclization, but it can't do that extra step to drive the equilibrium. So this is actually not going to form, not formed. Okay, so that's a pretty cool example. It's one of the homework problems, also. Okay. Right, number four. So, what is what's the the common theme of claisons? They make what kind of products do they make? What kind of products do claisons make? All the kinds of claisons made something keto something, right? They made beta keto esters, right? Beta keto esters. Okay, so now we're going to do a, a slight variation of the claisen called the ketone mixed claisen. Ketone mixed claisen, and the uh, product is not going to be a beta ketoester. It's going to be called a beta diketone. What do you think that is? A beta diketone. That's a pair of ketones that are beta to each other, right? Beta diketone. Okay, so let's just show a simple example of this acetone. And so what it's going to be is a ketone reacting with an ester. That's all it is. And it's otherwise it's the same exact thing. And we also use a simple base like sodium ethoxide, ethanol, a little bit of acid. Okay. And um, and it makes a beta diketone. So the, the essentially in a nutshell, carbon attacks the ester kicks off the ethoxy and you get uh, those two things attached and it's uh, beta so but that's that position is attached to the ketone so it's a beta diketone the mechanism is basically identical to a claisen uh, 
But one question is, which proton is more acidic? A ketone or an ester? And I already told you this 10 minutes ago. pKa of a ketone is what? And the pKa of an ester is what? You should go look them up. Okay. Or I'll just tell you. <laughs> Ketones are about 20. Esters are about 25. So, who's more acidic? A ketone is a little bit more acidic than an ester. So which proton gets deprotonated? Probably the ketone. So you make a ketone enolate. Okay, and now it's just the same as a clason, except you're not using an ester enolate, you're using a ketone enolate. Ketone enolate. So the enolate just attacks, you do your NAS reaction. Kick off. You got your beta diketone product. Then you have your two, your 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 base reaction, your acid reaction, the same as before. The same as all the clasins, and that's kind of how the me mechanism ends. Base takes the proton. This is this is highly acidic. I forgot the pKa was it nine or something. So it's a you can go look it up. We did, we just talked about it five minutes ago. But it's an acidic proton, and it gets re removed, and then you reprotonate. That's the ketone mixed clases and reaction. Um, yeah. uh, there is the possibility that the uh, ketone is just going to aldol on itself, because you know it is an aldol substrate. Also, uh, the way to avoid that is to avoid aldol. Aldol reaction, the self aldol, right? It self aldoling on itself. Uh, you can add it slowly, add nuke slowly, and then it's never around in high concentration so that it could become a electrophile. It just gets immediately chumped up as the enolate, and then it's a nucleophile. It goes and, it goes and attacks the Electrophile. So that's one of the tricks we do. We often any 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 kind of mixed reaction. You you always add the nucleophile kind of slowly to the reaction mixture. Okay. All right. Um, let's talk about these reactions. The Clasin and the ketone mixed clasin, for example. Clasin and ketone mixed clasin. Um, in a retrosynthetic environment or context. So retrosynthesis means synthesis going backwards. So the idea of like me asking well, here's a product. How do you make it, right? Uh, let's draw a random example. Five-member ring. Okay, um, and with an ester on there, and then and then we might ask ourselves, how would you make this? And you show that with this kind of arrow, it's a retrosynthesis arrow, retrosynth arrow, which basically means the same as like that kind of arrow. <laughs> it's, it's the opposite direction. This, this just means like, how would we make this? We would make the from this starting material, right? Which is the same as this kind of arrow up top, where it's like that would sh that would be used to make this. Okay, but anyway, that's a retrosynthesis arrow. Um, okay, and, and so what do you look at, look for here to decide, you know, are we going to use a clasin or a ketone mixed clasin? 
That's the question. Claisen or ketone mixed claisen? What pattern and functional do we have? Do we have a beta diketone or a, a, a cyclic beta diketone or a cyclic beta ketoester? Well, it looks like a cyclic beta ketoester, right? Ketone and ester. That's a, and, and you make a keto, beta ketoester from a claisen or a ketone mixed claisen. So which makes which? Ketone mixed claisen makes beta diketones, right? And a claisen makes beta ketoesters. So there's definitely going to be a uh, claisen, right? And it looks like it's a ring. So is this an intramolecular claisen? And the answer is yes. It's an intramolecular claisen, which even had another name. It was the Diekmann. Diekmann cyclization. Cool. All right, so... Wonderful. Um, okay, so how do we break this all apart? Maybe use our little numbers and we can say that one, two, three, four, five, six. That's probably the, the numbering. Carbon two attacks carbon six and kicks off a ethoxy group. That's what Claisen's do. So now you can imagine we just add a little squiggly line right here. There's a squiggly line to suggest, you know, that's a bond that's being created in this process. So, all it's going to be is a long beta diester with, you know, 1 through 6 and ethyls on both ends. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so to do this reaction, all you do is to make this to make this product, you just treat this with base, and then carbon two attacks carbon six, and forms the beta ketoester linkage. Okay, all right. So just as another random example. What if we had, we're trying to make this product? Um, okay, is this a claisen or a beta uh, ketone mixed claisen? Claisens make beta ketoesters. This looks like a beta diketone, and beta diketones are made by the ketone mixed claisen reaction, which we just talked about. So this looks like um, just a simple example of a, a ketone mixed claisen. I would think the easiest way to do this is just envision starting from a ketone, like cyclopentanone, and then throw in this, but an ester form of it, like the ethyl ester of this. And yeah, that's, that's probably the fastest and easiest way to make this. So just, you can envision nucleophilic part, reacting with the electrophilic part. And this is a great electrophilic part because it doesn't have any alpha protons, so you can't worry about it reacting with itself or anything. It's just this carbon's gonna attack this carbon, kick that off and give the product, okay? So that's a nice example of a looking at a beta diketone product and being like, well I'm gonna make that from the ketone mixed claisen reaction. Between a nucleophilic part, a nucleophilic ketone, and electrophilic ester. Okay, moving on. Um, so both of those products of the claisen and the um, ketone mixed claisen, they're both called beta dicarbonyls, right? Of course that makes sense. Why are they called beta dicarbonyls? Because they are, carbonyls are like C double bond O things and they're beta to each other. So beta, beta ketoester or beta diketone are both beta dicarbonyls. 
Um, and the next question is, can we do anything with them, like synthetically? And the, the answer is yes. Beta-dicarbonyls beta as synthetic intermediates means we can use them to do synthesis, which is kind of cool. And I'm also going to call this section other useful reactions of beta dicarbonyls. Other useful reactions of beta dicarbonyls. So the first thing is they are nucleophilic. Beta dicarbonyls Are good nukes, good nucleophiles. Beta dicarbonyls are good nucleophiles. Um, so that just means, well, you know, the proton's acidic, we can take it off and then go react with an electrophile, SN2, right? So here's a beta ketoester. pKa is low. We'll say roughly 9 to 13 in general. They're you know, fairly acidic protons. So it's really easy to uh, rip off that proton with a base also, same base that we use to, to do clasins. And then we'll do like methyl bromide or maybe methyl iodide I think is the better choice because methyl bromide's a gas. Methyl iodide's a liquid. Um, okay, so yeah, what do you get? You get a product with a methyl group on it, right? What if we do this again? Base, same base, and then like benzyl group, benzyl bromide. What do you think the product is? Methyl, benzyl. So these are both examples of it's an easy deprotonation because you don't need a strong base, like LDA or something. Just sodium methoxide, uh, pK of ethanol is like 15 or, or something like that. It can, it can deprotonate these beta dicarbonyls nicely. And then uh, you can alkylate them, right? Of course, other, other dicarbonyls, super easy. So like a dinitrile. Isobutyl bromide. Do it again. Uh, allyl bromide. I don't know. Whatever. Two alkyl halides. And that just attaches them both to our thing. And you get a product like that. All right, continuing this theme of beta dicarbonyls as synthetic intermediates, I'm going to do a kind of cool reaction. It has a slightly scary name, but it's not. It's really not that scary. It's the acido acetic ester synthesis. Okay, that's the name. Acido acetic. Uh, it's a way to uh, make so it yields as its product ketones with two R groups. Usually, R, whoa, oops, sorry about that. Um, R and R prime. So it's like you can make a methyl ketone, which is, is a methyl CH3 ketone, and then R and R prime. And the reaction name is called the acetoacetic ester synthesis. All right. So what is it? It's not that crazy. Um, you start with a specific molecule, which is a beta ketoester. It's really easy to make this. If you, if you wanted to make this, you could make it from two molecules of that, uh, ethylacetate, right? A little bit of base, a little bit of acid. Ah, you know, you got this stuff. It has a name. It's called ethyl acetoacetate. You don't need to memorize the name, but 
that's where the aceto acetic esters, and this is going to show me aceto acetic is kind of that, right? Okay, so um, given what we just talked about, it's very easy to attach to our groups. Like that. How would you do it? Base Rx. Base R prime X, right? So it's very easy to attach the two things there. And then what is cool is what happens next. With treatment with acid, H3O plus, and maybe a little bit of heat, um, you get the product, which is weird. A lot of stuff's going on. We'll, we'll explain that stuff in a second. You get the methyl ketone. So this whole thing falls off in this process, which is cool. It's got a cool mechanism. So we love, love mechanisms, right? All right, so what's going on here? I'm gonna, I'll step through the key steps. The first key step is with acid in, in cooking, H3O and cooking, is what I call the reverse fissure. reaction. And it what that does is it cleaves the ester. So the you know you can put on an ester with the fissure esterification or you can take it off with acid and it's called a reverse fissure. So we've we talked about this before. Another name for it would be acid catalyzed ester cleavage. We'll talk about it a bit more. I'm not going to review the mechanism because you know it already, but I'll give you some hints on it in a second. Okay, the big thing though is you get a carboxylic acid, right? And this thing is called a, a something keto something, right? It's a beta keto ester. So we're going to go from a beta keto ester to a beta keto acid. So that's going to become a acid, a carboxylic acid. All right, so that it gives us a beta keto acid with R and R prime. Alright, beta keto acid. Okay, let's write that down. It's a beta keto acid. Now beta keto acids are not happy molecules because they can easily lose CO2. And that's what's going to happen is this whole thing is going to fall off with CO2 and it's going to give us the product. Okay? So the beta keto acid is susceptible, uh, we'll say, likes to lose CO2. Likes to lose CO2. Anytime CO2 can form, that's a very happy molecule. And, and so this, you know, this will undergo the loss of CO2. So how let's, I can do the mechanism of this really easily. So what I do first is I don't do a reaction, I just do a rotation, bond rotation. So we're going to rotate the bond. We're going to flip up that carboxylic acid a little bit and it's going to look like ketone. Carboxylic acid is poking up to make a little six member ring, dot dot dot. Okay, and then we still have our R and R prime. R, R prime. That's all we did. We rotated. Okay. So to do the decarboxylation is really easy. You just have your ketone reach up and grab that proton. And then this pair of electrons goes there. That makes CO2. This pair of electrons goes there. And that forms an enol. Enol of a ketone, right? So what does that make? It makes CO2, O2C, CO2, whatever, and you get your enol. We know that enols rapidly do what to make keto forms? Tautomerism, tautomerism. which is chapter 18, I think. Uh, it's really a proton transfer, right? All you're doing 
is you're transferring a proton from the oxygen to the carbon, right? Because the oxygen loses a proton, the carbon gains a, a proton, and the double bond goes away. But that's all technically a proton transfer, which is also called tautomerism. Enol tautomer goes to the keto tautomer. That was a whole chapter 18 thing. Remember that? Enols and ketos. Okay, so that is the acetoacetic ester synthesis, and it's just a way you can make almost any methyl uh, methyl ketone with two R groups. Okay. Okay, so to do this, well, to continue with this idea, I should talk about the ester hydrolysis reaction. I'm not going to show the mechanism. It could be a qu on a quiz question, so you should know it. Um, and let's just let's think of a, a generic ester going to generic acid. So we'll, we'll simplify this. Mechanism of ester hydrolysis. with acid. Alright, so... Generic ester reacting with acid, protonated water, to make generic acid plus ethanol. How does it work? I'm not going to do the whole mechanism, but I'll start it for you. Of course, you protonate acetyl 1 to O. That's an RSCC. And then water attacks, etc. That's probably where I'll stop and let you do the rest. But yeah, it's like you protonate, RSCC, water attacks, proton transfer to make ethanol a good leaving group because ethanol is what falls off. And then the other oxygen or one of the oxygens swings down, kicks off ethanol, and then lose your proton and blah, blah, blah. And that's how you do the mechanism of ester hydrolysis in this mechanism. Um, probably the the most unique new thing is going to be this rotating of the beta keto acid and then the, the decarboxylation. It's called decarboxylation, which is the loss of CO2, and that makes the enol, and then that proton transfers to the ketone, okay? Which is an easy mechanism, it's just, uh, you can review that in chapter 18. Uh, usually just the oxygen swings down and double bond goes and grabs a proton and then you lose the OH proton. Okay. So that's the mechanism of decarboxylation of a beta keto acid. Okay, so we're still on number six, which is these uh, synthetic uh, reactions related to beta dicarbonyls. And we're on B, which is the acetoacetic ester synthesis. Acetoacetic ester synthesis, which is just this sequence of reactions uh, we just learned about. Let's do an example going backwards. Here's a methyl ketone with an ethyl group and a benzyl group. And then the question is how to make with acetoacetic ester synthesis. How are we going to make this with the acetoacetic ester synthesis? Ester. Well, it's usually it's pretty easy. We just have to follow the sequence, right? We start with that one starting material, and we add two different R groups, and then we do the magic acid water thing, and it falls apart. So all we got to know is what are the two things to attach. Well, looks like we have 
benzyl, which is phenyl CH2, and ethyl, right? We have, we have benzyl and we have ethyl. Those are the two R groups. So now we just kind of start with our thing. Four steps. Base something, base something. Base something, base something. So NEOET, NEOET, those are the bases. What are the two things we're attaching? Phenyl CH2Br and like ethyl Br. So add one thing, add another thing, that just snaps them on. Alright, now they're snapped on. And H3O does everything and gives us our product. Right? I'll draw the intermediates, I'm not going to do the mechanism again. I may show the decarboxylation. So acid cleaves the ester to the beta keto acid. Which is unstable. It rotates to give the beta keto acid rotated form. Dot dot dot. Grab the proton, keep it flowing. It makes the enol. Running out of space, I'll do enol. And you got your ethyl and your benzyl. And that just tautomerizes to get the final product. Alright, you have your benzyl, you have your ethyl. And it tautomerizes. Tot is a proton transfer, PT. Cool. So that is another example. What about. Okay, so this makes it. The general product of these reactions is. What do we call them? It's a substituted methyl ketone, because it's a ketone with a methyl group, and a di substitution on the other side. So could we make something else like, I don't know, uh, like that? Well that looks like a di substituted methyl ketone also. And the question is, where are the, what's the R group going to be? Um, well, you can disconnect there, you can disconnect there. And now it looks like your R group is going to be something with like a, a chain of one, two, three, four, five carbons, right? One, two, three, four, five, with like a bromine on one side, bromine on the other. And that would make this product. So, the way to do it. is start with your ethyl acetoacetate, which is our normal starting material. So to do this, what I usually say is NaOET excess. So we have an excess base around. And then we're, we just kind of throw in the, uh, how many carbons is it? It's, it's one, two, three, four, five carbons, BRs on both sides. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. That makes this thing. All right. How's it do it? It base takes one proton, then it attacks, 
you still got lots of base around, so then base takes off the second proton, then it attacks, and then builds the ring. But you, you get an intermediate that looks like this. So after the base gets formed, or base takes the proton, base takes the first proton, then it goes and attacks. Now you got something that looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six is the bromine. One, two, three, four, five. Something like that, and then the excess base takes off the second proton, then it goes and attacks, and you, you make this, okay? So, that eventually makes this beta keto ester. Okay, now we do the acid treatment, and then basically, end product is what you want to make, which is the that, right, which is, of course, the same as that. Let's go through the key steps. So the acid, of course, hydrolyzes the beta keto ester to a beta keto acid. H3O, you can say minus HOET, which is the ethanol. Alright, and then that makes the beta keto acid, right? Beta keto ester, beta keto acid. Now you always do your little rotation trick. Whoops. All right. Add a little dot dot dot. Or in this case, dot dot. This grabs the proton. This decarboxylates, makes an enol. Now you get your enol. Totomerizes which basically forms the double bond O, it's a PT, proton transfer, to the ketone form, and you go, there you go. That's how we make a kind of methyl ketone with a cyclic, like a ring, a six-member ring attached to it, using the beta keto, sorry, the um, acetoacetic ester synthesis. On number six, which is these little synthetic tricks. I don't know what we called it originally, but essentially related to beta keto esters and beta carbonyls. Uh, we have another one that's very similar to the last one. The, the last one was the acetoacetic ester synthesis. This one is identical, it has a different name. It's called the malonic ester synthesis. Um, the difference, the, the starting material will be a little different. Um, the, the big thing is the product is not a methyl ketone with two things on it. It's a carboxylic acid with two things on it. It's Overall, it's going to be very identical to the last thing we were just talking about. So, yeah, we, we're, here we're going to attach an R and an R prime. So it's very analogous similar, we'll say similar, to the aceto, acetic ester synthesis. Very similar. Okay, so what's the difference? The difference is we start with an, uh, we don't start with um, a beta keto ester, we start with this diester. This um, thing, it has a name, it's called diethyl Malinate and mal malinate, you can see. Oh, it's kind of like malonic ester, malinate. That's that's where the the name comes from a little bit. Okay, so let's just show a quick example. We'll do the same thing. NEOAT base, and then we can pick our R groups. NEOAT 
something, N-E-O-E-T, something, I don't know, let's do uh, propyl bromide as one of them, and then allyl chloride as another. Allyl, of course, is the double bond one, the alkene, CH2Cl, is it allyl, allyl chloride. Okay, what does that do? Well, attach one thing, attach the other thing. So, you still got your two esters. Right. But now we got a purple and a aloe. And that was easy. It's nucleophilic. We just used it as a nucleophilic thing. So then we do the same exact thing and it's basically the same exact mechanism. We treat it with acid, we cook a little bit, and we end up with the carboxylic acid. Propyl we added, aloe we added. So that was added and this was added. And we were left with that carboxylic acid with our two things on it. As you can guess, it's the same exact procedure now. Okay, so by, by that I mean, what's the first thing we do? What does acid do? What did acid do before? Well, before you only had one ester and we cleaved it. Oh, here we have two esters, so it just cleaves them both. So we say uh, two uh, acid catalyzed ester cleavage, cleavage reactions. Okay, so we, we do a double ester cleavage. Of course, you know, if you do this on a quiz, that would be really silly to draw them both. And it would probably give you some kind of uh, abbreviation, of, you know, just just like, here here's R, you know, do it for one, and then, you know, it's understood that it happens twice. So, on the if we ask you about this on the quiz, I'll, I'll, I'll make it not silly and uh, super redundant. Okay, but anyway, it cleaves both esters. So now, what do we have? You cleave both, es both, both esters. This is a beta diester, right? A beta diester. That's a beta diester. What's this going to be? It's going to be a beta diacid. Beta diacid. So, what's our beta diacid look like? The same thing. But we have a pair of carboxylic acids. A propyl group and an allyl group. And just like a beta keto acid wants to lose CO2, a beta diacid also wants to lose CO2. So how are we going to do the mechanism? Same thing as before, I'm going to rotate. All I'm going to do is rotate one of them, usually the right one, to make the rotated product. Now one put, one's poking at the other. Purple, aloe, dot dot dot. So the oxygen's poking up there and then we just reach up and grab the proton. Now, now it's just a different enol. It's a carboxylic acid enol. So you lose CO2. And now you got OHO, HO, propyl, allyl. There's an allyl double bond up there. See that? So that's just an enol of a carboxylic acid. So it's OHOH and a double bond. Then we have CH2 and then the alkene. So here it says CH2, CH2, CH3. This just tautomerizes. Same exact mechanism as a ketone tautomerism. And you're left with the product, PT. So it's an enolization. Thing. Okay, so that's the uh, malonic ester synthesis. We'll talk a little bit more about it 
Uh, next time, we'll just show some silly examples, just like we did for the acetoacetic estrogen synthesis.